Right, nearly finished with this training manual. Last bit, fault codes. Right, contrary to popular belief, fault codes are there to help you. Chances are our equipment is not faulty. Um, our equipment goes through huge tests. When it leaves the factory, it's gone through massive amounts of tests. It's been soap tested, it's been tested in every which way it can possibly be can. So take it that when you take that inverter out of the box, it is working perfectly. Um, so the, there's a number of fault codes. The whole list of fault codes is listed on our instruction manual. But what I've tried to do here in this training manual is identify a number of the very common um, fault codes. And these are the things that you really need to be aware of. F13, um, this is something that may pop up um, if you're doing something on the inverter, really that you shouldn't be doing. Uh, if you're actually um, changing, say from battery to no battery mode, changing the parallel settings, um, basically it should be done offload. And if you are taking, doing these changes, suddenly an F13 might come up and the inverter might shut down. It's protecting itself. Um, it's changing function dramatically, Alec, which it shouldn't do. So if you do get an F13 because you've done something, you just reset it and hopefully you haven't done any damage. But it is caused by changing something hot while it's on load. So be very careful about doing these settings. Um, what I normally suggest to do is take the load off. Um, so it's just on the grid side, it's just like plugged in basically and it's not doing any real work. And then if you're gonna do changes, so be very careful. F18 fault, it's over current fault. This is basically on the load side where there's too much current drawn. Some people say, well, it happens at night, I get an F18 in the middle of the night. It's probably because it's, it's probably for some reason, maybe two or three air conditions switched on at once. Therefore, what you need to check is separate between your essential and your non-essential loads. So I would class most of your air conditioning being non-essential and that should be connected to the grid side. During the sunshine time, it will still be powered off the solar, like a, a grid time inverter, it won't export, but it will provide power both sides. So your essential should be your lighting, your security system, maybe some sockets, your TV. Um, you don't want some old, big, massive um, air conditioner put onto your essential side, because it could, if it's over current, you could take it, you could take it out. And you've always got to remember that, because some of these, we've measured some, some of these air conditioners, some of them have a surge kind of 100 amps, in rush current, especially the old fashioned type. The new ones are much better, the inverter type are much, much better, but the old ones, these big capacitor starter motors, uh, it's almost like a short circuit. And if you get two or three of these coming out at the same time in the middle of the night, and sometimes it can happen because they're just on and off as they go, and suddenly, boom, you can get an F18 fault, and it can take out your whole system, and it will shut down the system, so suddenly you've got no power. So therefore, it is absolutely imperative that you separate between uh, essential and non-essential, don't take these chances. So it is a problem. If, you, if an F18 does come, you must look at your, mm -hmm. your peak loading of your, and separate some of your wiring. Um, it's quite important. F20 is also um, an overcurrent, but it tends to be caused by the batteries. And F20 is because the battery can't deliver enough current. Because you know, if you draw a power off the inverter, it has to come from somewhere, it comes from the battery. And if the battery can't deliver, then it's a problem. Often look at the C rating, AGM batteries. We look at a 0 0.25, 0 0.2. I recommend a, look at maybe a 0.1. Uh, off a lithium battery, again, they are much better. They're often 0.5 um, on the C rating, but also consider the cables and consider the cable lengths. If you've got um, several, battery, uh, several inverters, make sure your battery cables are all the same length. Don't have one one meter, one two meter, one five meter. They all need to be the same length, even if you just run it around everywhere. If you've got three, five, four meter, whatever, all four meter, all the same, because it will cause a problem. Um, and it will it, the voltage drop on the on the cables will cause a problem. So you must you must check that. So make sure and also make sure the cables are heavy enough. Um, normally, uh, if you're running off a common buzz bar to an 8.8, .8, 50 millimeter, if it's not 35 millimeter, just make sure the cables are heavy enough. People always fall out. If you get standard lithium batteries, they tend to come with 35 mil cable, uh, which is fine. Um, but if you're running a cut, if you're running a, a, it sometimes can give you a false sense of security because you think, oh, great, I've got 200 amps. And you run them connected, connected, connected. You can't. And if you've got four of them, say, I'm going to pull 200 amps, you can't pull 200 amps through a 35 mil cable. So it's a flaw. 
um, you need to run the cables separately. Um, so you need to consider the most really you want to run off a short 35 mils of hundred damp, that's even pushing it. So you need to consider that. And most lithium battery packs have that. So always check that. F23, AC current, uh, transient current. Um, this is what they call it. Generally, the engineers refer to it as an AC current because it can be seen the AC side. Um, it's actually a, a, an earth leakage. It's generally caused on the solar panel side, on the PV side, not the AC side. So, but it leaks through. So it's, it's caused through capacity. It's, it's something leaking through. So you need to check the solar panels. A lot of these faults do come from the solar panel array. Um, some poor quality solar panels may be tripping to the ground. Um, there's a cable maybe leaky or whatever's a bad connection somewhere. So this is something to consider. You always consider this. F24, um, this is also an insulation impedance problem. Um, again, it's some sort of leaking current to the ground. You don't want leaking current to the ground because especially these panels might be putting out you know, two, three, four hundred volts. Um, it can be dangerous. Make sure your panels are well grounded. If you have got a leaky panel, uh, leaking as in mean as leaking power, replace the panel you have to check it if you got if you get sort of an f23 f24 then go with your mega you need to check each panel check it to the ground check it to make sure check your cables um your electrical engineers you know what to do but you know it, it's just make sure it's basic stuff so then they are basically all to do with solar panel look at the solar panel f26 is more to do with split phase and most of what we do it doesn't really cause a problem um, we use two phases, but if, if you've got an F26, I would suggest you contact the service centre. Um, it is not, it's not, it's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. You, you've got a problem somewhere, so contact that. F29, parallel communication problem. I did mention it before. It is a very, 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 very common issue. It's where people have an issue that two inverters or set multi inverters are not communicating to each other. And if they're not communicating to each other, bump, it comes up at F29. F29 comes, focus on the cable and the connections and the settings for the parallel settings. So all you want to do, concentrate on the parallel side. Either change your cables, get better quality cables, change the cable configuration, look at the resistors, which are the little dip switches you've got, um, replace the cables if necessary. You don't need to contact the service center. Just, just do these are things you should do automatically before seeking any help because they'll just basically go through the same thing. Make sure all the software is the same. Make sure all the inverters are the same, the operating system is the same, everything matches. So before you do that, do all the basics, cable settings, check everything very carefully. Sometimes you may have five inverters, six inverters in, in, on a parallel, and one of the inverters you didn't click parallel setting, or you set the Modbus setting wrong on one of them. Just go carefully, just carefully check each of the settings on each one of them. So. F35, no great, well, no good presence well, the electrical contractor. You can sort that one out. I'm not going to go into that one. Um, F42, uh, AC line voltage. It's, it's basically on the inverse, if you look for the, on the grid parameter settings, you can set the upper and the lower settings. Um, if you're, it depends where you're located. And sometimes some places have quite a big deviance on these. Um, especially if you're at the end of a very long run from a cable run or if you're on a, however you, or a swell line, for example, um, these voltages can be quite high up and down. You need to set them on the inverse. You've got the, the, the high grid, the low grid. Basically, this trip trips and this F42 comes up if the inverter goes outside of the parameters that you set, not from the inverter, it's what you set and go on the grid parameter settings. So if your voltage is too high or voltage too low, you can program the inverse. If it goes out the maximum permissible on the inverter, then you've got a grid problem. So you need to contact the utility. But generally, it's to do with what you, you set. F47, F48 is a frequency. Um, it, the grids tend to be pretty okay, unless you're a very small town on a very small power station. Uh, and you put a loading that causes the turbine or the, the, the generator to slow down or you're using a generator. If you're using a generator and you load it up, you may end up with a frequency shift. Either generators, the regulator on generators not working properly, it can go too high, or you load it, go too low. Occasionally, um, there are some frequency shifts uh, to do with grid problems. Um, but generally, the frequency shift is, a, is the turbine, the alternator slowing down. 
So be it at the power station, which isn't highly unlikely to happen, or more likely if you are running off a local generator and it's being loaded. When they're loaded on some of the generators, it can occasionally slow down a little bit. And that's basically caused from that. The grids tend not to, because if you have a, an imbalance on the grid, on the frequency, if one, is, if one frequency is slightly different to another frequency, wow, you've got a major problem, because basically the power stations are battling against each other. They'd be battling the power stations. So um, <laughs> it doesn't matter whatever you do, they'll blow themselves up. It has happened, has happened. And when that's happened, you can, you know, it's happened in America and it can take out the whole the states or in the UK, it can take out massive amounts of part, chunks of power when this happens, when you get a frequency problem with the, with the power stations out because you get battle of the power stations. It's not about your loading, it's about the power stations fighting the power stations. And it all happens, it all ends up pretty bad and you end up with a power outage. So no need to worry about that. It's more likely to cause by a generator uh, or if you're running off a local, a local supply and that's where it tends to be the problem. You've got some settings, you can do some, again, you can go on the grid parameter, you can do some setting changes in that. Um, F56, DC buzz bar low. This is your battery, basically it's your battery. There's, there's another pop possibility, you look at your, uh, if you go onto your um, system mode and look at maximum cell power, uh, it might be set too low. So uh, if you're setting it a little bit low, it could also cause it. But generally, it's to do with your battery, the C rating, the maximum power of the battery. If you, if you want to draw 8,000 watts or 16,000 watts or whatever it is, those batteries have got to be able to supply it. And those batteries have to be as good as the inverter is. And if the battery is not as good as the inverter, the battery is going to fall down and you've got a problem. So that's something you need to work be aware of. F63, arc problem. Uh, it's something, it just basically means that the connections on the solar panel are not very good and it's creating some noise, they call it an arc, I think it's more of an Americanism, um, don't worry too much about it. Um, if, you do, if you are using it and it does come up, check your, your connections. It is a potential fire hazard, um, you really don't want a bad connection. It'll be a localized, maybe on an MC4, not connected properly, whatever, and it's causing some noise. So you need to you need to investigate. It's a pain in the neck to find. It's really difficult to find if you if you come up with it, because you've got to check each connection. Sometimes it might be there. Sometimes it might be so in the middle of the day when the sun's shining and the connection might bzzz, and then suddenly it welds itself and it fixes itself because these things can fix themselves, especially on, a, on a, an F63 fault. So it is a real real nuisance to find, and if you do get one. Good luck, because it ain't an inverter problem, it's an installation problem. F64, F64 is the high temperature, the IGBTs, the insulated gate bipolar transistors, they're the things that do all the work. They're, 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 that's, the, that's the actual engine of the inverter, the IGBTs. Um, I mentioned before we use IGBTs, we use MOSFETs, that's the, that's the thing that does it. Um, these things get hot. Um, these things get well, they get warm because on a, on a transistor you get a slight voltage drop. All transistor, the IGBT is a, is a sort of bipolar transistor, and you get a slight voltage drop across the, the on the silicon on the PNPN, on PNP or MPN layer. And between the two layers, you get a, a 0 0.7 volt or a 0 0.6 volt drop, and that creates heat. Um, and so, as you pull more power, that will create more heat. The inverter has massive internal heat sinks to cool it down, and most of the time it won't even need the fan. But two things if it is drawing maximum power and it is in a warm area, the fan will start. If the fan is clogged up and you've got dust and you haven't serviced the thing properly, then you've got an issue. You, 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 you need to clean it, get your vacuum clean, and clean it out. The, 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 the IGPT is going to get hot. Or if you've decided to mount the inverter in a very hot environment into a container painted black and inside it's reaching 60, 70 degrees, then as much air as you want to put across those uh, heat sinks, it's going to get hotter and hotter because there's no differential on the temperature. You need to make sure you've got an air conditioner. If you are experiencing that problem, then you clearly have a, an environmental issue. One, it could be dust, excuse me, or one, it could be more to do with the, um, the temperature. You need to look at it, you may have to fit an air conditioning unit. So that's basically, um, I'm going to come and go to some common questions and answers later. But for this training manual, I've tried to sort of complete, I've tried to cover most of the major points. So I hope I've not bored you too much. Um, use the documents I've given you. and I'll, I will update, I will put a few more bits on later on.
Thanks for watching my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.